Hello boys and girls, uh, this video is not from my living room, so the audio on this video is not as great, um, but I think it's bearable. This video is a continuation, um, I mean, in a sense I see all my videos as, as continuations of one another, uh, I hope there's some red thread, uh, but this is really a, a kind of uh, add-on or second part to the video I did on quaternion algebras, um, you know, different representations of it in two by two matrices and over different fields. Uh, in this video, I connect that to uh, Lie algebras. You know, I, um, I made a video two weeks ago about the axioms of Lie algebra theory. And in this video, we're going to take the quaternion algebras, these families of representations of quaternion algebras. Um, and we look at basically the commutator, we look at what uh, sort of Lie algebra um, they naturally give you. And um, the main point of this video is that I'm going to show you explicit computational results. You know, there's not going to be too much um, matrix multiplication explicitly done. Um, I, I state results, but uh, nevertheless, I give kind of more explicit uh, results than what you would just get if you just skimmed the Wikipedia article. And um, so, uh, you know, as we saw in that uh, video, the quaternion algebras, like any quaternion algebra is uh, four dimensional and um, in the sense that there's these three, two generators and you can define the other two uh, base vectors in terms of them as well. So you have like four directions and um, they together uh, form uh, a Lie algebra, as we will see. Um, but they also have subalgebras, and depending on the field, you can discover even more subalgebras, uh, subli algebras, and uh, therefore this is like the perfect opportunity to see uh, a range of uh, important Lie algebras. And in particular, we're going to talk about uh, SU2, uh, which is also SO3 uh, on the Lie algebra, um, and also SL. Um, Two over uh, the complex numbers and also the the two-dimensional Lie algebra. There's one two-dimensional Lie algebra and you know one-dimensional Lie algebras are trivial, uh, zero dimensionals as well. So this like covers a, a big round of the small Lie algebras. We are not going to talk about um, Heisenberg algebra, Heisenberg Lie algebra, which has the three-dimensional representation. Um, but other than that, we cover the, the important ones, I suppose. Okay. Um, so if you have not seen it. The, watching the quaternion algebras video will help a lot, although I do a, a short recap right now. So let's get into that. This is the first page here, is really just a copy of the page I had uh, in the other video. So um, we are uh, going to speak about a generic field and we take uh, three numbers A, B, C. The number C will not be so, so important. A, B is the other numbers that characterize which quaternion algebra you work with and the, the classical quaternions are obtained if you set a and b to minus one. Characteristic is not two. No, I made this, uh, this video on characteristic two if you're interested in why I point that out. Um, and we'll talk about representation. So, you know, the, you can define quaternions in terms of free laws. I will show them also in a second. But one approach uh, is just, just introducing uh, representations of these uh, generators from the start, and that's what I'm doing here. So we say there are two uh, generators, i and j, and they have uh, this matrix, matrix representation. So again, a and b is, um, are two elements of the field. The square root of a um, is used to enforce the Lie algebra relations here, but the square root of, like the, the number that's, that's given by the square root of A doesn't have to be uh, in F in the field. A is in the field, square root uh, of it not necessarily. If you have an algebraically closed field, like the complex numbers, then the square root of any number is also going, again, being in a number. But for example, if your field is the reals and A is minus one, as is the case, um, if you look at the you know standard Lie algebra for quaternions, the, the standard quaternion algebra really, um, 
then the square root of minus one might not in, be in there and you on, only get it once you pass on to the complexification or the, 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 the Lie algebra over the complex numbers. But okay, these are details. Um, for now, I also want to highlight that um, when I speak about the quaternion algebra, then I speak about these elements, i, uh, j, uh, and later k and, and e, and their multiplication. The, you know, you take two of these elements and multiply them together. Um, if you speak about representations of by two by two matrices, which we do in this case, then this is going to be just a matrix multiplication. However, when I speak about the Lie algebra, then this might under the hood use this multiplication and the matrix multiplication, but the operation in the Lie algebra is really just the, the bracket, and this is viewed uh, a priori abstractly as, as just one operation of two elements and not. A priori, not the commutator. It is effectively always the, the commutator, really. Um, if you go through the universal algebra, blah, blah, blah. I talked about this in another video. Um, but um, if you think of the Lie algebra, you think about the operation being the commutator. If you think of the algebra, you think about it, uh, the operation being any like associative operation, in this case, matrix multiplication. Well, OK. So um, A and B characterize um, the defining laws that we will see in a second. The uh, number C is just a parameter this, that interpolates between different representations and it, it, it doesn't even pop up in most um, most uh, computations. For example, if you compute the determinant of J, then this will, will factor out, it will cancel out, and this, this sort of cancelling out is the case in most uh, computations. Okay, and um, so if you multiply I and J, then we get this matrix, this is called K, and this linear, li linearly uh, independent uh, from I and J itself. And also, if you take now any uh, of the generators, I, J, or also K, and square it, then you get something proportional to the identity matrix. So for example, uh, 1 over A times I times I, and you can do that easily here, you see this the minus one will cancel out, this thing will drop out, and you get the identity. So there are at least four directions, and these are also the only directions. Um, the E is, is uh, proportional to the unity matrix, or it's the unity matrix, so this commutes with everything, and the other things are don't commute with each other. In fact, they aren't anti-symmetric. Okay, a general element looks like that. I'm using the notation that I say V is a general element, and the components are t, x, y, and z, and e, i, j, and k are the, the basis vectors. So when I speak about the quaternion algebra as a vector space basis, then I mean that these four matrices are treated like the basis vector, even if here they also have structure. Um, but in, in this uh, in this speak, in, as a vector space, uh, i, j, k, and e are basis vectors, and x, uh, T, X, Y, and Z would be the components. And so, obviously, the general element in this quaternion algebra is also a 2 by 2 matrix if the basis vectors are given as uh, 2 by 2 matrices. Uh, but this is only a representation. You can also get far in calculation with just the, the defining properties that I will not talk about now. You don't have to talk about matrices, but if you have the matrices, then uh, the matrix multiplication does uh, fulfill the laws directly for you. Okay. So the defining properties in which you can talk abstractly about the uh, quaternion algebras are as follows. Uh, you demand that i times i is a times e, where e is the unit of the algebra in an algebraic sense. Um, same law for uh, j but using b. And also you want them to be uh, anti-commuting. And then these laws already uh, determine all the, the the whole multiplication table in this in this algebra and it turns out to be four dimensional here. Uh, I will not go through that in detail, but here are some of the relations that you get. For example, i and k, where k is defined by i and j, just using the relations above um, and the fact that e is a unit element uh, tells you how to compute, for example, this and how to take the square of um, K, which turns out to be minus a times b times the unit matrix. So every square, like the, the any of the three generators, a, j, j, i, uh, k, 
to the power of 2 is proportional to e and um, the coefficient that the multiplication factors are some functions of a and b and, and that's that's basically this is the abstract um, quaternion algebra that we have have represented here okay um now um, I, I highlight that again if you set a and b to minus one then the algebra is kind of special in the sense that all the the free uh, basis vectors i k and uh, i j and k behave the same namely they are k square to minus one okay and this was just a recap of the video that um, I did uh, some weeks ago and now comes the, the new stuff we're going to do some explicit computations okay uh, firstly we, I define uh, three matrices three uh, four by four matrices these are just arrangement of coefficients really I'm just going to use them to easily capture uh, some uh, calculations, um, the coefficients popping up there uh, using these, these matrices. Uh, so this is basically original work, if you if you will. It is just a, a device for me to capture information. And we, again, we, we consider a general uh, v-vector and then an, another general vector. And um, here I use the capital letters v and for the coefficients t, x, y, and z in capital letters. So this is going to be two different vectors in this four-dimensional space, which is this generic um, this generic quaternion algebra, or, or, or really, since I have not fixed A and B, family of quaternion algebras, different al quaternion algebras. So now, one note. So if you take, um, for example, if you, if you take this inner product, or this, this two-form defined by one of these matrices, in this example I use the uh, G, uh, G, J, this is an index, this J, um, and you know, put one of the two vectors v from the from the one side and the other from the other side. So this is just the the, um, the Euclidean inner product. Um, so this here, this matrix, this four four by four matrix, is, is interpreted as a matrix acting on the basis of this quaternion algebra without taking any multiplication tables of the quaternion elements into account. Uh, so if I do just the Euclidean kind of um, computation involving this matrix and these uh, components t, x, y, and z, then you can easily convince yourself and th that you get this kind of thing. You kind of see that that uh, in the component, um, so if, 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 I, if I label these components 1, 2, 3, 4, then in the 1, 3 component, and the 3, 1 component, this is symmetric, and the 2, um, two four component is this anti-symmetric and so if you compute this thing with sum over all n and m from going from one to four then you get this kind of thing and this is symmetric in in um, t and y so symmetric in one uh, one three and anti-symmetric in two four so if, if I change here, if I switch the positions of V and capital V and, and small v, then this becomes a small one, this becomes a big one, this becomes a big one, this becomes a small one, and the expression would still be the same. Whereas here, you get a sine flip. Okay, this is going to be um, relevant to understand the result later. So this is just a note um, what the, the two form defined by these matrices look like, right? And now, um, yeah, here I make this comment. If I transpose this matrix and, and uh, subtract it. If we compute this thing, then by the node that I just made, um, this thing will cancel out in the, with this minus because it's symmetric. Whereas uh, here we get a sign, and then if you subtract it and you add, and you get two times this thing. Okay, so this is somewhat easy to see a uh, relation. Um, okay, and, and finally, I'm going to add, define more matrices. So since this doesn't have any A or B, this actually acts like a permutation matrix. You can easily see that, for example, if you, you know, apply any four vector here, then the, um, the, the with this matrix, for example, the um, one, four, and the two, three components will be switched, and here, in fact, it even gets a minus. So this like acts like a permutation uh, up to a sign. And so if I do GI, that's the first matrix, and then three times this permutation matrix and then the other one, then I get something involving actually all of the uh, A's and B's because they are already here and everything is restructured because of the, of the permutation and then it turns out this 
GE, as I call it, is this. And similarly, if you do here a permutation with this GE again, you get this matrix. Okay. So again, I will just use these matrices uh, later. That's why I define them here. Okay, and now if we go back to the matrix representation, right? Um, then V and V, these two Vs, um, are defined as uh, two matrix matrices in the representations of this uh, general quaternion algebras with A and B. Um, and so if I do the matrix multiplication, I get, of course, another two by two matrix. And what is the two by two matrix? Well, if you actually compute it, and I, I, you know, I did that uh, essentially by hand, then it turns out that, uh, of course, this element will also again be in a uh, in the quaternion algebra, right? It's it's a, the, the matrix multiplication is the multiplication of the associative algebra. So this is going to be again a, a, a vector in this four-dimensional space where uh, alpha is is a runs through the basis vector. So it's it's obvious that it's of the form sum over the basis vectors, some coefficient times uh, these basis vectors. And now, uh, as it turns out, the coefficients of this uh, of this two by two matrix. Um, with respect to this basis, to these four basis matrices, um, are exactly given by this sort of inner product that we have here. But here I, I, I put the coefficient g in, in, on the side, not in the middle, but it doesn't really matter. This uh, says that we, if we compute for these matrices, for this ma one, this one, this one, and also this first one here, if we compute the, the two forms, then we know how to actually compute the the matrices without actually doing the matrix multiplication. This is a kind of formula for the multiplication of the quaternion algebra inside it. Okay, um, yeah, we are interested in the in the Lie algebra in this two by two, uh, in this two by two uh, um, quaternion algebra, right? Um, so we're interested in a commutator. Like, what what does the general general commutator uh, look like, where the multiplication is given by the two by two matrix multiplication? And as I write here, it's it's now actually easy to guess because we already know how to compute that, which is this expression, right? And I already made comments about the symmetric and anti-symmetric aspects of this here. Okay, um, I'm going to phrase this result in terms of their joint, which is just the map that takes some um, some element v to the map from capital V to the commutator, small v with capital V. Right, so this is an, another way of expressing the, the accumulator, if you will, just with a linear function. Um, and the fun thing is that this um, this adjoint, you know, taking an element to the linear operation that makes uh, for the commutator with that element, this is actually a, a homomorphism of Lie algebras. And um, Homomorphism means you, you take the, the, the Lie algebra given by you know small v, capital Vs, and so on. And then if you instead look at all the uh, joint uh, maps, they are also just linear operations, right? They are basically matrices. They are linear transformations. These are joints because this is taking the commutator is a linear by linear map. And so, so this is a map. Then turns out that going to the adjoint representations, going to the, the this uh, map of commutations, is actually, again, a Lie algebra. Um, and it, there's actually, like, um, it actually fulfills the, the laws that you want from a homomorphism. I didn't write it down here, but it's the same with, with a group homomorphism. Um, it just means the operation on the one side translates to the operation on the other side in the same um, form. And um, this is true, uh, but because you know, on the on the image side of the homomorphism, uh, to show that it's again a, a Lie uh, algebra, you would have to prove the Jacobi identity, and the Jacobi identity um, is actually the same in this case in the the law of uh, for homomorphisms in the case. Okay, so uh, maybe this is a little bit sketchy here because I didn't want to make this too long, but. Um, you can also just, uh, it's not really necessary to, to believe me, and you can exit out, you can compute it easily that uh, taking their joint uh, is, gives another representation. Okay, um, that said, we're going to come back to the joint in a second, but now um, let's define um, this this 4 by 4 matrix. I, I write this in this notation. Um, this is basically 
this is basically um, uh, just taking the, the uh, sum of the um, components of V, you know, the components of T, X, Y, Z, and, and uh, arranging them in this kind of 4 by 4 matrix. matrix. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know, if you do statistics, uh, no, bullshit, uh, mechanics, <laughs> since I'm working in statistical mechanics, uh, usually go with statistical mechanics, but no, it's also just, if you just look at mechanics, normal mechanics, um, then you know, maybe know this because uh, this is the matrix representation of taking the cross product. So for example, if you apply this matrix that stems from V to the, the another general uh, four vector, then if you do the matrix multiplication, you get actually this expression. And here you see, well, the the zero of component the, or the first component, the, the T component, the commutative component, is actually zeroed out, it's set to zero. The rest here, this is actually the components of the cross product that you may know from, you know, basic geometric algebra. Um, and here uh, you also see that the, the, the because here these entries are zero, and these entries are zero, the, both the small t and the capital T is actually dropped. So this operation uh, is independent of t or, or um, the the commutative element. Okay, and now eventually it turns out that the, the adjoint, if you actually uh, compute this, this operation here, you know, if you actually compute the, the commutator, then the adjoint is actually exactly given by this uh, cross product here. Um, plus there is this some uh, diagonal matrix here. This matrix is exactly this matrix. So there's a diagonal where the A and B's are still there. This is not relevant because the zero component, the, the T component is, is gone, but the B and the A are still there. Um, and the same law expressed in terms of the commutator it says that the general commutator of two general elements in this general quaternion algebra, um, at least for this, uh, this, this, we have computed it for the representation here, but you can also, I mean, um, I didn't actually check it, but you can also abstract most of the calculations in, in, in other representations, so no representation at all, just using the uh, quaternion rules, um, is given by the cross product in the end. This is literally just a, the cross product of the imaginary part. Um, yeah, uh, and by the way, so if you look at this ma matrix here, if you set um, a and b to minus 1, you know, which is the case of the, where, where you get to the, the, the simple normal quaternion um, algebra, then um, this matrix actually becomes in the in this uh, the last three components in the imaginary part uh, the unity matrix, and so you see that the commutator, if this is the unit matrix, um, is literally just two times the cross product of these elements, and um, the the component with T is not involved. So actually, we find that there is a nice three dimensional uh, Three-dimensional Lie algebra contained in the Lie algebra of this four-dimensional space, right? The commutative element is not really uh, necessary because for the commutator, the commutative elements are like uh, you know cancel out; they they, they are, don't contribute. And so, the quaternion algebra is four-dimensional. The, the as far as the the commutators uh, concerned, the Lie algebras, the, the zero component is not so relevant. So we have a three-dimensional. Lie algebra there, and this is given by the cross product, right? Um, and so uh, here we find actually um, what is the uh, what is isomorphic to the SU two um, Lie algebra. So one three dimensional Lie algebra is three dimensional in the sense that there are three um, there are three basis vectors as a vector space is three dimensional, even though the representation is two dimensional. The representations of the basis vector is two by two. But there are three of those, i, j, and k. Um, and and moreover, I talked about the adjoint, right? This is uh, this is if we just restrict ourselves to the three-dimensional space, uh, um, the adjoint is a linear map, so it's, it can be represented as a linear three by three matrix. So we see uh, this is a homomorphism. So this this um, this algebra, this SU two, also. 
can be mapped to a representation of three by three matrices in this way. I hope that was not too so fast. But this is also where the uh, relation between SU2 and SO3 um, over the reals uh, emphasized here um, comes in. Okay, and I'm still having 5% uh, of battery, so I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, so that was that, right? And now we're going to look for um, subalgebra, synthesis algebra. It's uh, quite interesting, actually. So um, let's say for a moment, okay, that the square root of A is actually also already in the field. Uh, in that case, we can take I and divide out the square root of A, and we get this uh, diagonal matrix with, with just uh, 1 and minus 1 uh, in the diagonal and nothing else. And also we can do the same with K and we get this matrix. And then what we find is, if we can actually um, you know, get rid of the square root of A, A M expression there, then we can uh, define the, um, the, the, the standard basis vectors for the 2 by 2 matrices uh, in, this, uh, in this quaternion algebra as well. So, for example, if we take, if we take this, this H, which is 1 and minus 1, and E you know, is, is 1, 1 in the diagonal, if we add them together, then we get 2, 0 in the diagonal. If we divide it by 2, then we get just the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0. And similarly, we can, using these matrices and, and E, I, J, K, also find the other ones. Which means that we have the general um, two by two matrices over our field uh, that we can now reach in this in this uh, in this Cartesian uh, algebra. Again, assuming that the square root here is there. So, for example, if we take the the uh, complex numbers, then the square root of any complex number is again there. So these four basis vectors span the whole uh, space of of two by two complex matrices. As we see, because we have this uh, direct, easy to see, uh, important four matrices there. Okay, and now if you actually do the computation, if you pick out these two, you know, this is the one with one zero 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 and zero one zero zero, the first two, if you will, the first row, and then you find out that if you take the commutator of those, then the the uh, the, the commutator actually looks like that, and the commutator of uh, any uh, matrix with itself is of course zero, and so this means, hey, there is actually a simple uh, two-dimensional uh, Lie algebra within this uh, Lie algebra, assuming this here. Um, which means, oh, there's actually a, a, a Lie algebra that is not trivial, like it's not commutative, only everything commutes, but there's actually something non-commuting, namely, namely this direct uh, relation, and this is actually part this algebra in that case. And um, this actually turns out to be up to isomorphism, the only relation that defines a two-dimensional two, two Lie algebra. So this is actually the only two-dimensional Lie algebra. And by the way, even if we, if we step away from our two-by-two two game that we talked about the whole time, you know, disregarding that, if we just take this relation and define a Lie algebra like that abstractly, then this also makes for a nice Lie algebra over any field. Okay, and finally, um, Again, assuming uh, this here, this, that, that we can actually cancel out the square root of A, then, um, and you know, this is always the case if, for example, A is 1, by the way. Um, but uh, we also have then this relation of, of this, uh, this matrices, and this where this matrix and the, and these two, this one, and this one. So this is the, the diagonal matrix with um, plus and minus one as in the diagonal, as well as the, um, the uh, triangular matrices where on the, like for this one, the one is in the, in the upper, um, upper right, and for this one, it's in the lower left. And here you also have this relation, and this is also uh, a nice relation defining a Lie algebra. And it turns out this is actually, despite being three-dimensional, not the same as the Lie algebra defined by, uh, definable by I, J, and K. So it's actually different than SU2. Um, this happens to be SL uh, to uh, 
over the co complex or C, for example, over the complex numbers over this algebraic closed field. And so we see, oh, there's actually another three dimensional um, Lie algebra in this four dimensional Cartesian algebra, at least over this uh, complex numbers, for example, or al algebraically closed field. And um, but of course, the, the three dimensional Lie algebra before, you know, the the the, the cross product of Lie algebra, if you will. Um, that one was not using the unit matrix, while this one is constructed using unit matrix. So this lies somehow differently in the four-dimensional. There's the two different the algebras lying in this three-dimensional one, but they are different ones. Okay, so uh, on that note, I uh, hope that was interesting and not too fast. I, I sort of hurried through this, but I, I thought that I think there's a, a bunch of good comment, uh, content. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Take care.